Hi guys, I hope you're doing really well. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Muriel. I'm a food photographer, recipe developer, and content creator. And on this channel, I talk all about food photography, vegan recipes, as well as personal growth. And in today's video, we're doing something super new, something I've never done before. I'm doing my very first ever collaboration. This collab is done in partnership with Two Market Girls, which is a blog, an Instagram page, as well as YouTube channel that is run by two friends, Kat and Dev. Kat and Dev are two extremely talented ladies who are super passionate about food photography, videography, as well as recipe creation. And they reached out to me a couple of weeks ago and they asked if I would be interested in doing a collaboration where I would shoot one of their recipes from their blog and they would do the same with one of my recipes. And today I'm going to be shooting their vegan Korean barbecue burger. And I'm gonna take you behind the scenes and share with you a little bit more about my setup, my lighting, the accessories that I use and why. And on their end, Kat and Dev are going to be doing the exact same thing but with one of my recipes, the recipe for hazelnut chocolate cups. That's on my website. I'll be showing you how I will film it and Kat's gonna show you how she will photograph it. actually already live and if you want to check it out which you should it's linked in the description below and on that note if you're interested in this topic make sure to watch this entire video from beginning to the end if you've been following me for a while you know that before I even start shooting I always 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 look for inspiration for the shoot that I'm going to be creating. In that case, I'm going to go on Pinterest and take a look at other burger pictures just to get a little bit of ideas of how I can style my burger, in what order should I be placing the garnishes, what type of backdrops do I want to use, even if I want to go more with a dark and moody feel or if I want to go for a bright and airy feel. So before we even start selecting the accessories, we're going to do that first. Here's a little pro tip for you. When you are looking for inspiration images on Pinterest, always write food photography next to the name of the dish that you're thinking of shooting. That way you'll always find professionally shot and professionally styled beautiful images to give you inspiration for your shoot. So based on my inspiration board, I feel like the style that I'm more attracted to is more of a darker and moodier feel. Kat and Dev in the photo that they shot for this Korean barbecue burger, it was more of a bright and airy look. However, I think I'm going to go more dark and moody. Also, one thing that I noticed in a few of these pictures that I selected, they use the technique of having some dripping sauce. And I think that is definitely something I'm going to be incorporating in my final shot. And also, I really like the use of either parchment paper or brown paper as a surface to put the burger on. I think it looks very rustic and approachable and really cool. So I think I'm going to be doing that. Now that I've chosen a couple of images to use as inspiration, I have a better idea of the direction that I want to go. So I'm going to go out and select all the accessories that I'm going to be using for this shoot. One thing that you might be wondering is, Muriel, you seem to have a lot of different accessories. Are you going to be using them all? It seems like it's a lot. And my answer is no, I probably won't. <laughs> to be quite honest, um, I just like to get a couple of different options with me. That way, as I'm shooting, I can swap things and change things based on the look that I'm trying to get and try different options. Generally speaking, when I go into a shoot, I'm, I don't have a very specific, specific idea in mind. So the props have now all been selected. In terms of my reasoning behind the props that I chose, I decided to go with pieces that are both dark as well as pieces that are light. And the reason for this is because although I'm shooting a photo that is going to be dark and moody, I still wanted to incorporate pieces that would add a little bit of light to my scene. Generally speaking, my photography 
although it's more on the moody side i do like to add a couple of pops of accessories that are lighter like a beige napkin or a light gray napkin just to add a little bit of light to my entire scene also, I stuck with uh, pieces that are more brown and have natural and earthy tones. In this case, to kind of replicate the more rustic and natural look that I saw in some of the photos that I selected for my inspiration board. Now that all my accessories are selected, it's actually time to set up my entire scene. So I'm going to set my camera on my tripod and connect it to my computer. And then I'm going to place all the different elements the way I want them to be. Once that's done, I'm going to cook the burger and start shooting. So let's get started. Because I want my actual burger to be as fresh as possible when it's time to actually shoot, I'm just using the burger bun as a placeholder to put in the place of where my actual burger is going to be. And I'm styling my scene around that. Because I've already selected quite a few accessories, probably even more than what I actually need, it just allows me to play around with different options, try out different napkins, pinch bowls, to see what works best for the type of scene that I'm trying to create. I'm personally a huge fan of creating scenes that are perfectly imperfect and in this case I'm using some sesame seeds that I'm sprinkling on my backdrop to just create that more natural look that I love to create in my images. This is my light setup. I'm using a diffuser to block off some of the light from the back burger and I'm also using lots of foam boards to block a lot of the light to create my moody shot. To shoot these beauties, I use my Sigma 35mm f1.4 as well as my Canon 50mm f1.8. To learn more about all the lenses that I use in my food photography, make sure to check out the link in my bio. Well, that's a wrap, you guys. It went super well. I'm very excited to see the final images. Believe it or not, it's actually the very first time I shoot a burger in my entire food photographer career. But it went super well. I'm super happy with how the burger ended up in the end now i'm really looking forward to actually tasting this and then get to editing and show you the final result so i was a little bit too hungry to record my reaction actually eating this burger but i have to say you guys it is absolutely amazing you have to try it oh hello <laughs> So it's the next day. This morning I edited the images that I shot yesterday and honestly I'm really excited about how they all turned out. I selected four images in total and now let's take a look at all of them and I'll explain to you a little bit of the styling tips that I used in my shoot yesterday. So this is the first image. I'm really excited honestly about this one. I'm super happy with how it turned out. One thing that I mentioned in the video a little bit earlier is that I wanted to have a look that's a little bit more rustic and dark and moody. And I think I managed it really, really well. I'm super happy with this image. I love the use of the paper from that I ripped from an old book that I bought, um, as well as a little bit of brown paper that's under the burger. I love the fact that it's not too perfect. There's a lot of crumbs here and there, a little bit of chopped cilantro, a couple of sesame seeds. I also really love the appetite appeal in this image. Uh, I love the sauce that's just dripping down and makes it look so delicious. In terms of like the stacking of the different garnishes, basically my thought process was try not to have all the greens in one spot. So that's why I had the lettuce at the bottom as well as the kale and carrot slaw at the top. That way, because they were a little bit further from each other, they wouldn't compete too much with, with each other and it would look really, really good in the burger as a whole. Also, one thing that you'll notice is that I did make a second burger. It's the one that's in the background. However, I left it a little bit darker than the main one because I really wanted the attention to be on the main burger 
there's so many colors and textures in this burger that I really wanted to highlight that and that's why I didn't necessarily want to have two that were side by side and kind of taking a lot of the attention of the viewer. So now that we've covered the first one, let's take a look at the second one. This image is a little bit more different in the sense that it's a three-quarter angle rather than being straight on. I think it's cool to have just a different perspective on the burger, one that is a little bit top down as if you're ready to grab it and enjoy it so i like this one as well this is the third image which i think is probably my favorite shot i find it's really like a hero shot i love the amount of negative space that i used in this image i love the fact that there's space at the top um, as well as at the bottom and what this does is that especially because those two areas are darker it really brings in the attention towards the main burger and it makes it look like the star which it is and yeah i really like this one i think it's probably one of my favorites and last but not least this is more of a detail shot i wanted to have a picture that was really focused on the details of the burger the different textures the decadent aspect of it because all the other images were further away you could see the burger as a whole but in this one i feel like i could spend a lot more time like looking at the different garnishes and in this shot in particular i really love the way the light is hitting the kale i find because the kale was massaged with a little bit of vinegar there's kind of that like leathery texture almost and it looks really good in my opinion and um, yeah, I think that's it. I'm super, super happy about this collaboration and I'm so thankful to Kat and Dev for giving me the opportunity to collaborate with the Two Market Girls and also be sure that you watch their video where they recreated my decadent hazelnut chocolate cups. I'm going to link it in the description below along with the recipe for this amazing burger, which by the way, you should try if you're into Beyond Meat. This one's for you guys. It's for you. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I hope you had fun and you learned something new. And if you did, make sure to let me know in the comments below. Make sure to like it, subscribe and share. And on that note, I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day and I will see you very soon.